everything was once only imagined. Now, tonight, find out exactly what you, not what they think you ought to want, what you want. Ask no one's permission. You don't need any man's permission. You don't need your own decision. What do I want? Now, what would it be like if it were true? What would I feel like were it true? Now catch the mood and try to give that mood all the sensory vividness of reality, all the tones of reality, and then sleep in it, just as though it were true. And then await the inevitable. The inevitable is you're going to resurrect it and objectify it on the screen of space. And then the world will call it real. And they may not believe you. It doesn't really matter. If you tell them it came to pass because you simply imagined it, now, they'll point to the series of events that led up to it, and they will give credit to the bridge of incident across which you walk towards the fulfillment of that state. And they'll point out some physical thing that was the cause. No, the cause is invisible, or the cause is God, and God is invisible to mortal eye. Who knows what you're imagining? No one knows. But you can sit down and imagine, and no one can stop you from doing it. But can you give reality to the imagined state? If you do, yes, a bridge of incident will appear in your world. And you'll walk across some series of events leading up to the fulfillment of the imaginal state. But don't give causation to any physical step that you took towards the fulfillment of it. You imagine yourself having a marvelous business. And then comes the day a building is for sale and you haven't a nickel towards it. And a total, not a total stranger, but a man comes in and asks you quite in a friendly manner, are you going to buy it? And knowing you don't have a penny, you say to him, as you would a friend to a friend, with what? And then he said, well, I have money. It's only in the bank put, drawing nothing. You say, but well, I have no collateral. But he said, I've watched you. You're an honest person. Your family, they're honest. I think they are. Would you like me to buy it for you? I'll get my lawyer to bid for it. If they knew that I'm bidding, that I have money, they'll bid me up. And so I get it at the very lowest price by getting a lawyer who represents more than one client and they do not know who he represents and he'll bid for it. Are you willing to take it regardless of the price? And you say, yes, I'll take it. But I have no collateral. All I need is your signature, that you will simply pay 6% on whatever the price is and then reduce that principle over a period of 10 years. Agreed? Yes. But then sign this and we'll see if we can buy it. That day, you owned the building, and you didn't have one nickel when you owned the building that day. You only had your signature on a piece of paper. At the end of 10 years, you repaid the man his principal. You reduce it every year, paying him 6% on the remaining principal, and reduce the entire thing at the end of 10 years. That man dies 20 years later and leaves you 150000 in cash, tax-free, and a couple of homes and many personal belongings. In the meanwhile, you continue in that business, and it multiplies and multiplies. And that year was 1922, 1924. This is now 1968. That building, I'm speaking factually, that building in 1924 is now gone. He paid only $50,000 for it. It was repaid and repaid. A bank, three years ago, bought the property, because the building was rotted, bought the property for $840,000 in cash and no capital gain. From 50000 to 840000 In the meanwhile, the business has expanded into all the other islands so that today you couldn't buy them out for $15 million all in imagination. And this goes back to the imagination that preceded this man's offer to buy the building. For the young man seeing this building and entertaining a thought that the present owners deceived his father and through deception got him out of a partnership, a junior partnership. And he was moved not to get even, but to prove that he really had something within him and could be a success in spite of their deception. And so, every day he would see on that marquee, not their name, but his own family's name, 
and he would see it in his mind's eye because you could not take their name and transliterate it and make it spell this man's family's name. But he saw it, and in his mind's eye he saw that name, which if true would imply the family owned it. He did it every day, twice a day, for two years. And then came this sudden, out of the nowhere. And the whole thing was made possible, and today they're all over the islands. And they have no partners. They've never taken in one partner, never sold one bit of stock outside of a family ownership. All by imagination. Now, I know what I'm talking about because I am a member of that family. I'm speaking of my own family. This is not hearsay. I know it. My second brother, Victor, was the one in whose imagination this whole thing began to bloom. And he still works all by imagination. He knows what he wants, and then after having decided in himself, that's what I want, and that's good for the business, he then, in his mind's eye, he appropriates it. And then let things happen. As told us in Scripture, the vision has its own appointed hour. It ripens. It will flower. If it be long, then wait, for it is sure, and it will not be late. Read that in the book of Habakkuk. Here is the true translation of that passage in Habakkuk. So when you know what you want, remain faithful to that assumption. And the assumption, though at the moment, is denied by your senses and denied by reason. If you persist in it, it will harden into fact. Are we not told that God calls a thing that is not seen as though it were seen and then the unseen becomes seen? He calls everything from the unseen into the seen in this simple manner. For he is the resurrecting power. So if I assume that I am, I don't have to have evidence to support it. I assume that I am. I am what? Well, I name it. And having given it a name, given it form, given it definition, remaining in it, I resurrect him. So I know what I'm talking about. All I need from you is the acceptance of it. Will you believe it? Will you believe that with God all things are possible? Will you believe that all things are possible to men? Well, you can prove it in the not distant future. But you are the operant power. It will not work itself. If you dare to assume this very night that you have a better job than you now hold, or that you have a larger income, you may be fired tomorrow. Don't be concerned. On reflection, you'll see it was necessary to move you towards the fulfillment of your assumption. You could be fired. And I wouldn't bat an eye if you told me tomorrow, well, I did what you told me. You know what happened? I was fired. I have seen that. It takes someone to fire you, to get you into a better job. I have seen that time and again. I wouldn't go out and quit the job. You may be promoted in the job, or you may be invited by some other concern that is competitive to join them. I do not know how it happens. I only know if you remain faithful to the assumption it's going to happen and you're going to be promoted towards the fulfillment of the state that you have dared to assume that is yours. I could tell you unnumbered stories along this nature. So here I say dwell in the end. The end is where we begin. For if I see my name on the marquee, that's the end. I don't wait for the incident to take place in my world to move from one to the other to the other, leading up to that. I dwell in the end. If I go to the very end, what would it be like were it true? 